never thought the day would come we'd ride through the home farm without a single person touching us captives. Oh, yes, you did. When your debts forced you to sell Holston. Look here, old girl, there were your debts too. Don't quibble. The people respect Holston, not us. But our brother-in-law gets all the credit. Well, so do we, in a way, through his pay in cash when he married our sister, Drew. Oh, kid. That's too hard to argue. Come on. Come on, Marble. Well, Come on. You know, Bob's. I could never understand why you didn't marry Brian yourself. Bit hard in the mouth, not his type. Do work, that's all. Bit of luck, she's our sister. Cheer up, old girl. <laughs> I'll get a few hundred out of Brian for Marvel. Then we can have a bin. Mm, we could go to Capri. No, Scotland. Well, we'll see. Come on, I want my tea. Okay. Yeah. Come on, girl. Afternoon, madam. Afternoon, sir. Hello, Jenkins. Come on. Come on. Come around, girl. Well, Jenkins, there's a good sort of horse, isn't he? Well, sir, he's a good-looking horse. What do you mean, looking? He's like a bad-tempered horse to me, sir. Too much white in his eyes. What did I tell you? Oh, nonsense. You jump up on him and ride him round to the stables. You'll soon see. I'll hold it for you, then. That horse looks vicious to me. We'll have to work hard for that 400 quid. Guineas, old girl. <laughs> I want to hear the receivers, as usual. Maybe they saw us coming. Good afternoon, these forks. Were you wanting something? Yes, these forks. Oh, very well, miss. I'll speak to the master about them. I expect he'll let you have them. We've plenty. Oh, don't be an idiot. I don't want them. Uh, very well. No harm done, as the saying goes. Will you let me finish? They need polishing. Look. We'll soon fix that. There you are, miss. See your face in them, if you want to. For heaven's sake, take that chair away, too. Oh, that one? It's his favourite. Doesn't suit this womb. I've told your master repeatedly. It suits him, miss. My sister told you to remove it. Very well. I do. Let me bring it back again. Jolly good sandwiches. Fetch in the tea, will you, Cyril? Don't eat them all. I'll never forgive Brian for engaging a ship's steward as a butler. Halston, of all places. Brian can afford to be eccentric, even with the servants. He's got too much money, that's the trouble. It's his money. Quite. He's got to spend it somehow. Let's try and help him. Hmm. Oh, Brian, isn't she sweet? I wish she wouldn't have to grow up into a horrid old cow. If there weren't any horrid old cows, there wouldn't be any cows. And then what had become of all this? You love it, don't you? It's my reason for living. Sometimes I think I'm almost too lucky. Alston, you. Someday perhaps we'll have a son to carry on where I leave off. Come on, I want the tea. 400 guineas, we might go to Scotland. Oh, no, I want to go to Capri. Oh, you always want to go somewhere expensive. Lots of friends in Scotland. Plenty of scotch. Obviously. I meant whiskey, old girl. Probably have to drink Chianti and Capri. Oh, well, there's no point in arguing about it. Brian may not want to buy a horse. Who wants to buy? 
Any man who can afford to wants to buy a horse. <coughs> Hello. Who are you? Max Harding, Brian's cousin. Didn't know he had a cousin. I guess he'd forgotten himself until I arrived back in England last month. <laughs> Have you been here a whole month? Why, sure. I'm Roberta de Winter, and this is my brother, Robert. Glad to know you. Are you visitors here, too? Oh, Lord, no. Brian's married to our sister, June. Oh, I see. Then that accounts for it. Accounts for what, old man? Well, you sitting here pouring tea before June is... <laughs> I'm sorry. What I mean is... Well, you wouldn't if you were ordinary people, if you get what I mean. I say, old girl. He means if we weren't members of the family, you wouldn't be pouring tea. So I gather. You evidently don't know that Halston has been our family seat for centuries. I guess I've lost track of English history recently. You're an American. Yeah, sort of. Ah. You're English. Yes. Ah. Plantagenet, old boy. Really? I thought the name was De Winter. It is. <laughs> well, I uh, guess that takes care of that, doesn't it? Uh, tell me, um... Do, do you do anything? Oh, sure. I manage a ranch in the Argentine. Where's he say it? Argentine. Oh. I'm over here to buy pedigree bulls for the corporation, so I call on Brian for advice. I say, old man, do you buy horses, too? No. Oh. Hmm. Hello, sir. Excuse me, sir. The enemy has boarded us, sir. Is that the way to speak of my in-laws? Uh, you know what I mean, sir. I beg your pardon, madam, but they're hollering for their tea. I bet they're moving the furniture about. <laughs> Blimey. How did she know? Hello, everybody. Hello, Max. Hello. How you met these two crooks? Sorry, were they? Oh, I see you started. Oh, yes, we're here. Oh, don't get up, darling. I only claim the head of the dining table. <laughs> you can have that. It gets all the drafts from the door. Yes, so I think it'd be a good idea if we screwed it to the floor. It certainly would, sir. <clears throat> Brian, it doesn't go with the womb. It goes with me. My father sat in that chair to make his money. To me, it's a symbol, a mascot. Well, by the way, I've decided to pull down those cottages in Blackberry Lane. I say, old man. But, Brian, those are the most picturesque cottages in the whole estate. And the most insanitary. They're not fit for decent people to live in. Decent people have managed to live in them for a good many generations. Well, managed is right, but that's not good enough for my tenants. Say, old man, must you be so damn catastrophic? I'm afraid so. Brian prefers decent order to a picturesque model. I suppose tradition and the past mean nothing to you. They mean everything to me. That's why I wanted Holston and a wife that belonged to it. So... You'd like to destroy all evidence of the past that doesn't conform to your modern standards. No, I'd improve it. Hmm. I'm afraid we aren't all blessed with your wealth. Now, Bobby, that's not fair. If Brown's money can solve the problem of decent living conditions for everybody, there's something to be proud of, as proud as we are of our tradition. I doubt, uh, Bobs. It's too hot to argue. <laughs> uh, I'll go and tidy up. I'm going to pick some flowers. Coming, Brown? Sorry, darling, I can't. I must have gone for those plans for the home farm. Max will go with him. Sure, I'd like to. Good. Let's go. I say, Brian, old man, could I have a word with you? I made rather a find in Leicestershire. Just the horse for you. I've got a horse. That's what you think. Wait till you see Marvel. If he's that spirited brute Jenkins is looking after, I've seen him. He's worth every penny of 500, but you can have him for the four I gave. I don't want to make a profit for my own brother-in-law. <laughs> Unless you like to make it guineas. Thanks, I don't need another horse. Ah, perhaps you're right. He's certainly spirited. Takes a lot of handling. I know. I rode him here. You need strong wrists. I could ride him. Don't make any mistake about that. Of course you could, old man. Let's forget it. Tell Jenkins to bring your horse round to the front. I'll go and change it, shall be long. June, I've been doing some pretty serious thinking. We can't go on like this much longer. You are in love with me, aren't you? Why did you have to marry Brian? 
When he was buying Halston, he stayed with us. Robert and Bobby asked me to look after him. Found we liked the same things. I admired his ambition. I grew to like him more than any man I've ever known. There was no one else then. Darling, listen to me, please. What you felt for Brian then was very different from the way you and I feel for each other right now. Yes, I know. June, you have a right to be happy. Oh, I know. Brian's a swell guy. We neither of us want to see him hurt. But we've got to be honest with him and ourselves. Why don't we go back in the house and tell him now? June, don't you see? This is the only possible way out of this mess. Sorry, old man. Robert, for God's sake, do something about that horse. I phoned the bet. You won't need him. A bullet's quicker. A bullet? Oh, let's wait for the bet, old man. He's broken his back. He's suffering. There's a revolver in that cabinet. The bet will be here any minute now. Oh, I'll do it myself. Take it easy, Brian. I'll take care of the horse. Thanks, thanks. Well, Cyril. Aye, aye, sir. Up the maybe. That's right, sir. Put all your weight on the port side. <laughs> Hey, it's steady as she goes. Hey, you are, old man. You're walking like a two-year-old. June, write out a check for Robert. No, old man. Four hundred guineas, wasn't there? I couldn't take it. Tell Max to bring it up to me and I'll sign it. Yes, Dad. Uh, let me get to the palace. You all right, sir? Yeah. June, let me have a packet of those strong bath salts, will you? I think they'll help to fix this stiff diff. Madam, we'll get him upstairs. Has the doctor come down yet? No, not yet. Do you, do you think it's well at service? You, you let me know when he does, won't you? Oh, sure. The doctor hasn't come down yet. You know, old girl, I warned Brian that horse would take a lot of handling. But Danny, Bobby, he insisted on riding him. Oh, I know, dear. I told you it wasn't your fault. I should have warned him more. Made him listen. Well, it's no use looking back. We've got to think of the future. Yes, that's right. If it's really serious, we must take over here. Can't let Holston down. Exactly. Can't let the old place down. The doctor will be down in a few minutes, madam. Why is he so long? I've got a cup of soup for you. Come along. It's got a nice drop of sherry in it. Do you want to get me into trouble? He's bound to ask me if I've looked after you the first moment I see him. Drink it while it's hot, madam. Fair cheers you up the smell of that sherry, doesn't it? Sir. No, no, madam. Steady, steady. It may not be as bad as we think. That's better. 
You know, all through the war, I used to wake him up every morning with a hot cup of tea and a nice glass of Eno's. Even though we were limping back to port after having the daylight strafed out of us. And that gets you to know any man kind of intimate. And the one thing he never could abide was the sight of other people suffering. Buzz out, sir, little boy. I want to talk to Mrs. Harding. Very good, sir. Preach. You will be perfectly frank with me, won't you? Is Brown going to be paralyzed? Yes, it is possible. But we can't know anything for at least a month. I'm afraid even then we shall have to get a specialist. I can't say for certain whether Brown will ever be able to walk again. Poor oh, darling. Thank you for being honest with me. You know, June, in the Navy, Brian used to go off the deep end with me sometimes because I took an unnecessary risk. He was the exact opposite. Do you know why? Because for him, there was still so much to do in life. He'd made up his mind that he was going to come through somehow. I believe that same spirit is going to save him now. Yes. There's still so much he wants to do here at Halston. Well, I must be getting along. I'll call in again tomorrow. Try not to worry too much. I'll go around the side of the house. Ask me to give you this. Good heavens, he made it guineas. I must rush up and thank him. I don't think anyone should see him right now. Uh, are you deliberately trying to stop us from seeing our own brother-in-law? I am stopping him. I see. So that's how it is. But somebody must look after things here. Brian's decided that I should take over for a month. He asked me to tell you he thought a month's holiday would do you both good. Oh. Well, that seems clear enough, doesn't it? Don't bother to show us the door. We still know where that is. Come on, Robert. Look By here. the way, old man, let me have a receipt for that check, will you? Just to keep the book straight. He is going to get well again, isn't he? We can't know for some time. He wants me to run things for him until he's all right again. Yes, of course. It's what he wants. We have to, don't we? Yes. Thank God we didn't tell him. Shall we ever tell him? No. Hello? You and Max going to play tennis? Yes, and I'm going to beat him this time. Oh, darling, don't forget Dr. Pritchard's coming, will you? Oh, we have some time this morning, isn't it? I've been looking through this report you made on the home farm. Tell me good, if only you could spell. And we such a pig. <laughs> I got through these last few months without you and Max. Darling, I hate to feel I'm spoiling things for you. Don't talk through your head. Well, I must go. Max will be waiting. Why don't you come and watch? I've got too much work to do. Well, I'll come as far as the French windows with you. Go on. Don't do that, Ackman. Oh, look. Cyril's not watching. I should my parlor tree. Yeah, hang on to the chair, steady, while I get up. I've been practicing this upstairs. Yeah. In her June, I, I think my legs are getting stronger. Yeah. I shouldn't be able to throw away these damn sticks. Yeah. That bad no crop, is it? We'll soon have you walking from London to Brighton. <laughs> you run a lot. See you later, darling. Yeah. Right. What 
What are you up to? Now, now, sir. You've been as good as gold for the last month. Don't go and bust your record. <sighs> you mind your own damn business. What do you think I was an invalid, the way you pushed me about? Well, I'm not going to have you all worn out when the doctor arrives. Stop pushing me around. Well, if I don't, you won't do any work. You go and get me a large whiskey. Blimey. We ought to have shares in the distillery, we ought. There's so much work to do. Yes, darling, we must. It'll only upset him if we stop. He can't bear that I should miss anything I've had before. Hey, Max! What are you stop for, you slacker? You must drive him crazy, watching me do all the things he used to do with you. Max, please don't go on. We promise never to think back. got some job of his own with a meat company. Look, Robert, do you mind if we don't discuss it? Not at all, girl. Only thinking of you. Brian notices things, huh? What do you mean? Well, he blew up just now. Just because I happened to mention that you two were enjoying yourselves playing tennis. I thought I ought to warn you. I'll see you later, old girl. We'll be back this evening for dinner. Bye, Robert. Shall we go back to the house now? Darling, Brian started noticing things. There's been nothing for him to notice. I know, but he's starting imagining. June, we can't possibly go on this way. No. What are we going to do? There's only one thing we can do. We both know it. I'll have to leave. Look, darling. Let's wait for the specialist report, shall we? All right. If you think it's best, we'll wait. Hello, old 
girl. When did you get back? Put that thing on the back. I've got some news for you. Hmm? You sound like a old girl. Jump in. What? Don't be so impatient. Look like the cat who knows where the fish is. I do know. What have you got up your sleeve? Max Harding has a past. Who hasn't? It's his future that worries me. This is the sort of past that might take care of his future. What? Well, supposing a daughter was suddenly plumped down in his lap. Don't you think it might lead to some rather awkward questions from Brian and June? His daughter? But he hasn't got a daughter. Why has he? Yes, he has. I've met her. She's staying with us for a month. Oh, no, she's not. Can't afford it. Oh, yes, we can. If she gets Halston back for us. She's over here studying, singing at one or two concerts, I believe. I met her mother on the boat coming over. Good Lord. Is the mother parked on us, too? No. She's married again and rather bored with a pretty daughter cramping her style. I still don't see how that helps us. Max Harding abandoned his wife and child 12 years ago and disappeared. Oh, Robert, listen. If we can persuade him that he owes more to his daughter than to Brian and June, well, the field's clear for us. Dash it, old girl, that's damn clever of you. <laughs> I'd uh, never have thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> This is mine. All it's meant in the past, all I could make it mean in the future. And your damn specialist announces that I've got to die. Well, why should I take his word for it? There are other specialists. I've been feeling so much these last few weeks. I've been out of this damn chair and walking every day. I know. And risking what's left of your life, trying to beat the inevitable. There's no use going into technical details. But the paralysis is moving upwards. And no specialist in the world can stop it. Do you think I'd be telling you all this if there were the slightest hope? Sorry, Pritch, you were only the messenger. It's the hardest job I've ever had. I feel in some stupid way I've let you down. Oh, rubbish. No one's to blame but the horse. And he gave his life for it. How long have I got, Bridge? Six months. Six months? Then everything I've ever dreamt of, everything my father worked for, finished. Just like that. During the war, you and I never saw death from the same angle, did we, Brian? You always wanted to, to hang on to life so desperately. Not from fear, but because there was, there was never enough time to do all the things you wanted. <laughs> Remember how mad you used to get at me? Because even in our stickiest moments, I always used to work on the basis that there was always somebody ready to take over where I left off. I'd like to think that you could figure it that way now. Of course. Yes, you're right. The thing that I've lived for mustn't die with me. And it needn't. Cigarette bridge. Go on, thanks. I've got to wrap it up in a neat parcel and give it to June and Max. I have six months to do it in. How the devil am I to bring those two together while I'm there between them, whether I'm dead or alive? What are you talking about? They're in love with each other, of course. They're too damn loyal to do anything about it because of me. June and Max. Sure you're not imagining? Pritch, no one's to know that I'm going to die. 
I'll have to tell June. I said no one. It's our secret. I can't lie if she asks me. You can and must. June and Max together can carry out everything I started to do. If I'd known about them before I had this accident, I could have given June her freedom and she'd have gone to Max. Well, now I'm a barrier that keeps them apart. What can you do about it? Blow up that barrier. Destroy every vestige of love, sympathy and respect they ever had for me. Now look here, Brian. You can't do that. Can't I? I'm not standing by and watching you kill yourself before your time. You've got to, Pritch. That's what our sort of friendship means. Cyril! Cyril! Oh, there you are. Give me some whiskey and hurry up. What the devil have you been doing all this time? Hello, Doctor. Hello, darling. Anything the matter? Matter? When I heard you calling for Cyril. Oh, I've got to call for somebody if no one bothers to look after me. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. What can I do for you? That's about with that. Anybody home? That's fairly obvious, isn't it? What? Oh, yes, I see. No offense, old man, only trying to be polite. How are you, old man? Well, that's equally obvious, isn't it, old man? I hope you got Bobby's message all right. Yes, I did, thank you. Brian, she's bringing some girl to dinner. Well, let's hope she's cheerful. Oh, she is. She's the loveliest 18 I've seen since I gave up that sort of thing. <laughs> I'll get you a drink. Got a minute to spare, Brian? That's a damn silly question. I've all my life to spare. I can't run away. I'll get on with it. 11.30, the Hunt Committee to settle the dispute about closing Shade Oak Cops. Good heavens, old man. Sit down. It'll need only a tact, Brian. Twelve o'clock, see Harrison at Lower House to choose the land to be broken up for the cauliflower experiments. Thank you. Do you know the winter there's a hundred thousand tons of cauliflowers imported into this country every year that could be grown here at a profit? Who wants a hundred thousand tons of cauliflower? Now, closing old cops, that's important. Sit down. Go on, Max. You're lunching with Colonel Thursby. He's taking you on to address the Farmers' Union at Chidley. June will call for you after the meeting and drive you back. I'm not going. Don't worry. Your notes are written, and June has typed them. Did I say all this? You did. We both think alike. Or are you pinching Brian's ideas to take back with you? Back? Back where? To his meat corporation, of course. My fellow's almost up, Brian. I see. Give me that diary. Hey, what's the idea? The idea is that nothing matters anymore to either of us. You can go when you like. Brian, what do you mean? I mean, there's no need for any of you to hang about any longer. Dr. Pritchard brought me the specialist report this afternoon. I'm a cripple for life. For life? If you can call it that. That horse had a sense of humor. He ruined two lives with one fall. Oh, my dear, how do you like the prospect of 20 or 30 years of me crawling about in a couple of sticks? Did you have to tell her like that? Yes, I did. Just like that. Hello, Ryan. How are you? Hello, Bobby. Oh, why so young? Well, June. All right. Uh, come here, my dear. Brian, this is Peggy Harding. Oh, uh, Harding? Hmm. We seem to have the same name. Yes, do you mind? Not a bit. I'm sorry, I can't get up. I've had an accident. Oh, bad luck. No, bad riding. What did I tell you, Brian? Isn't she lovely? You seem to have better taste in young ladies than you do in horses. <laughs> well, let's go into dinner. I'm hungry. How long are we going to wait for Drew? She'll be around in a minute. Robert, bring the sherry, will you? We'll give him a drink in there. Here, I'll help you. You won't. I'll do it myself. Brian. Peggy is a singer. Well, no, not really. In the musical world, I'm about as much noise as a robin. Oh, you could make a sound. You'd still be welcome. Open up some champagne, will you, Sir? Oh, Peggy, my dear. Will you sit there next to me? Bobby? Thank you. And Robert, you know where to go, don't you? Yes, indeed. Excuse me, sir. I'll take that. Well, how nice the table looks. 
better. It was the way he told. He was deliberately trying to hurt. I know. I don't get it. It's so unlike Brian. It was as though he was enjoying his own act. If he noticed anything between us, if he'd had the slightest suspicion, then that would explain everything. I think you'll find he's a lot better when I've gone. Max, if you go, I shall leave. June, you mustn't I mean, talk that way. I can only see this through if you're here to help me. Darling, of course I want to help you. And I want to help Brian, too. All right. I promise. I'll stay until something makes it impossible for me not to go. Let's go back to the house now. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stay here at Holston with us, Peggy? You could give us a hand on the farm. Well, I'd like to, but I don't know anything about farming. I've never done any that sort of thing. Oh, don't worry about that. My cousin Max will show you the ropes. Oh, Peggy, this is my missing wife. This is Miss Harding, my dear. How do you do? How do you I'm so sorry I wasn't here to see you. Hello, Bob. Hello. And this is Max Harding. Max Harding? Yeah, Max Millen. Heaven help me. It's a terrible name, isn't it? Oh, do you think so? It's my father's name. Really? Well, I hope he likes it better than I do. Does he, Peggy? I don't know. I never asked him. Peggy, didn't you tell me that your middle name was Quinton? Yes, my mother's family name. <laughs> now, if you'd married a Miss Quinton... It so happens that I did. Oh. <laughs> then uh, you must be Peggy's father. What? I guess you don't remember me. That would be a little difficult, seeing that you left my mother when I was only six. <laughs> well, we all thought Max was a gay old bachelor. <laughs> We're delighted to meet you, Peggy. We knew, of course, that Max had a daughter, but we never thought of her as grown up. You will come to one of my concerts, won't you, Brian? I shall come to all of them. You're a devil for punishment. Possibly, but I can take it. you've got there? It's Benson's report on the beet crop. He's decided to start thinning out next week before he does the spraying. I thought it was understood that Max was doing all that. Well, he's got to spend some time with Peggy. It's pretty considerate of you, I'm sure. But since Max has offered to do this for me, I should prefer that you leave it to him. Has he said anything to you about going away? Peggy made me think it was in his mind. Is this his idea or hers? How should I know? If he goes before I'm able to get about... Well, that was hardly what his offer suggested. I had thought of letting him take over the Pembroke cottage. 
so that Peggy can stay with him. I see. It might be a solution. Well, I think it's a ridiculous idea, just because father and daughter have a sentimental reunion. I think it's nonsense to tie them together. Don't you want him to stay? Well, not with Peggy here as a fixture. Sorry, Brown, but don't you think it's better to let things work out for themselves? Yes, of course. Hey, Max, why don't you come in? It's lovely. Well, how was it? <laughs> it was lovely. Why didn't you come in? Mm -hmm. Too lazy. And too old. Oh, what at your age? Sure, at my age. <sighs> oh, this is wonderful. I'm so happy. You're not a bit as I imagined you. You thought about me? Mm -hmm. As old, fat, <laughs> with baggy knees. And then I find you quite young. Quite good looking, too. <laughs> you and I are going to get along famously. We didn't used to, you know. I know. I remember being very afraid of you. I wonder why. Your mother always kept you to herself. You mean that she taught me to be afraid of you? Frankly, yes, she did. It worried me a lot. Of course, I was only six when you deserted us. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's the technical phrase. It isn't very attractive, is it? Well, is it true? Did you? I advise you to accept whatever your mother told you. I was an absolute obsession with her as a child, wasn't I? Well, she was very fond of you. And jealous of me. Now she's jealous of me because I'm grown up. She thinks I'll make her look old. You know something? Your mother was very like you. Only she was fair instead of dark. Yep, she had the same little adorable nose just like you. <laughs> <laughs> She was very lovely. Has she changed much? No, not much. She wears very well. Max, you are going to South America soon, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Well, how about taking me? Oh, please, Max. Oh, well, I wouldn't be any trouble, really. Honestly, I, well, I'd take a job or oh, I'd do anything you tell me. Please, Max. <laughs> All right. I won't promise, but we'll see. Come on. Let's get back to the house. This is a good trip, Bobby. Did you have fun? Oh, yes. I always enjoy following parts. Silla, I'm pleased to be home again. Tell me, has Mrs. Jenkins had her baby yet? She certainly has. Last Thursday at 3 o'clock in the morning. A boy and a girl. Oh, who are you? <laughs> Coffee, darling? Yes, please. Like it black, don't you? Yes, that's fine, thank you. June? Hmm? I want to thank you for letting me come here and stay with you and Brian. Nonsense, darling. We love having you. We want you to stay as long as you can. Max tells me you're getting quite an expert on Paula. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Sugar? Yes, please. Max has been wonderful. Robert, do stop fidgeting. You look as though something's biting you in an awkward spot. You've just been looking at the bridge table, old girl. I'm surprised it doesn't jump into position the moment you come into a room. You can't just sit still after dinner, old girl. For heaven's sake, Robert, stop floundering about.
one love, but the years move swiftly past. A maiden's day will not ever last. lavished on me by my loved ones. Well, now, how about this rubber of bridge? It's a jolly good idea, Robert. Count the hundred, I suppose, old man? Unless you get a native guineas, old man. If tonight was an example of the way you've been treating your wife, then it's time she were told the truth. Not by me. Then you can get another doctor, because I can't take it. You can't take it? What the hell do you think it's doing to me? I love June. I've got to go on behaving as I did tonight. But it's got to be done, Pritch. I've no claim on her or on life. She has. But for heaven's sake, Brian, there must be some other way. Tell me one. Well, surely if you do tell her the truth. If I told her the truth now, she'd stay with me. And Max would walk out with Peggy. Oh, I know, maybe after I've gone, they might come together again, but... What guarantee is there that I wouldn't sit like a, an ugly, crippled ghost between them? Wherever they moved in this house, they'd see this damn chair. No, Pritch, I'm doing the only thing that can make their lives safe and my own reason for living amount to something. Let's have a drink. June, there's no other way out. I must leave. You do understand that, don't you? It's the only way. Peggy must go with you. When are you leaving? Tomorrow. That means I must arrange the air passage. Peggy's passport will have to be checked. Are there many pretty girls in the Argentine? So Brad said. Max, you have to explain it to her. Haven't you even the courage to do that yourself? Max. No. If that's the kind of imagination she has, let her figure it out for herself. Imagination? Your lovers, aren't you? Do you know what you're saying? Max, you're not being made a fair to This is your doing, June. You're keeping Max here wasting his life. Oh, well, I thought you were so wonderful, admired, you respected you. Max, would you please explain it to her? Lo 
last night in the garden. <laughs> Just up here, we're coming to the place where I once caught an enormous fish. I'll show it to you one day. It lives in a glass case up at the plume and feathers. You like what you see? Mm-hmm. Why does there have to be people in it? Someone has to appreciate it. You love Halston, don't you? You're wise. It's safer than loving people. what's written inside this ring. I never got round to learning Greek. It's not Greek, that's Latin. It means to have and to hold. There's a flavor to that of things that survive because they're worth fighting for. I wanted to build a tradition like that with a lot of modern improvements. I got as far as finding the right place and the right woman. Oh, yes, whatever you may think of your father in June. You know about them? Yes, Peggy, I know. I don't understand. At first, when I realized how things were between them, I felt like hell. Then, suddenly I realized what it meant, what you've missed seeing, Peggy. Don't you see, if they went away together and left me in the lurch, what peace could there be for them? What peace could there be for me if he went and she stayed? You'd be destroying three people's happiness. I'm beginning to understand. Brian, what do you want me to do? Dr. Pritchard's advised me to go to Italy for three months. He thinks the sun might do me good. I've asked Bobby and Robert to come too. Peggy, I want you to come with us. I hear the Italian singing masters are pretty good. Just think what your singing would mean. Think of the thrill of being able to visit all the great cities of the world, hearing audiences shout your name. Think of the freedom of being able to go where you like, living by your voice. You've got so much. You looks, talent, don't waste them. Oh, Brian, is it possible? Well, what about June and Max? Someday you'll know all the answers. Will you come? Yes. Thank you. That's right. To Buenos Aires. Uh-huh. On the first available plane. Thank you. Running out on me, Max? Look, Brian, I have my own job to attend to, and they won't extend my leave of absence anymore. I see. And what happens to me? What happens to Holston? If you'll stop thinking about yourself and remember you have a wife, you'll get the work done between you. Got it all figured out, haven't you? Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but you can't go. I've been ordered to Italy. It's my one chance, and I'm going to take it. You have to stay, Max. You can't let me down now. I want you to stay, too, June. Oh, I shall be in good company. Robert and Bobby are joining me. Peggy's coming with us. You don't mind, do you?
understand. Is he, is he deliberately trying to hurt me? I don't know. He's changed so much, he might be a different person. What are we going to do? June, I almost wish we told him about us now. Brian asked me to give this to you, Max. His ring. For me? But why? I don't understand. Someday, both of you will. There's an inscription on it, you know. To have and to hold. It meant so much to you. Are you going to get the wheat in early this year? You better, you know, before the weather breaks. Come on, you two. You better get a move on. There's work to be done. Yeah, of course. June, there's work to be done. But don't forget to go down and see Mrs. Jenkins in the village, will you? You haven't been down to see the twins yet. What are you finally deciding about those cottages? Brian, there's something about destroying them. I haven't decided anything yet, but I've got a couple of ideas.